who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time of Pentecost for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong, driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim it. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native tongue? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Figura, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Britons and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own languages of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
He spaded, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem, people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or bold, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon them. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see, bloodshed. For justice, but heart, the outcry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Father. Again, it's, uh, it's great to be back here in home territory. I wasn't very, it's been a little while now, I hadn't prepared my homily yet for confirmation, and I was talking to some confirmation candidates at the cathedral. And I said, do you have any suggestions? I said, I don't want to be boring at the confirmation. And he said, Bishop, talk about sports, talk about sports, that would be boring. And I said to myself, all my teams are doing terrible. Sort of like Father Lewis is. <laughs> and these days with the coronavirus, our sports have taken a hit. The pros, college, local high school teams. Then I thought, well, maybe I'll spend a little bit of time talking about sports. Because, you know, there's an obvious connection between our Catholic faith and one sport in particular. Did you know that many centuries ago now, in an area not far from here, in our North Country, French Catholic missionaries saw Iroquois Indians playing a game out in the field using funny shaped sticks. They've never seen the sport before, they didn't know what it was. But those sticks reminded them of the bishop's cross or crozier. You know the name of that sport, lacrosse. The name stuck. French missionaries named that sport. Now, if I were to ask you candidates, as a quiz for your sports know-how, how many players are there on a baseball team or basketball team? How many players are there on a hockey team or a football team? If you said 9, 5, 6, 11, you're wrong. A team is made up of more than just the players on the field, on the court, or on the ice at any given time. The team depends on every player having certain skills to do the best they can to develop those skills to build up the whole team. Some are pitchers, you got catchers, home run hitters, quarterbacks, goalies, defensemen, shortstops. Each player has an important role to play in building up the team. No one person can do everything. Now, what do you have to do to be a successful team player? You got to practice and practice and practice. And as your mother insists, you should have a balanced diet to keep your body healthy and fit. Certain characteristics are also needed for whatever team you play for. Knowledge. You got to know the basics of the game, the fundamentals. How many hours does it take to retire your side? What's offsides? If you're going to play the sport, you got to know how to throw a football or catch it. Knowledge. Understanding. You got to know yourself your strengths and weaknesses, as well as those of your teammates, and the strengths and weaknesses of your opponents. Counsel. The good team player is willing to listen to and to act upon the advice of his or her coach. Fortitude, courage. You have to be ready to lead higher, stretch further, skate faster, shoot harder than you've ever done before. Risk giving yourself 200%, doing more than you ever thought you could. Knowledge. 
understanding, fortitude, counsel. Sound familiar? The gifts of the Holy Spirit. We become a member of God's team at our baptism. This afternoon at your confirmation, you will receive God's Spirit in a very special way, enabling you to now come up to the plate as a big leader in the body of Christ. And like a rookie on the team that goes through certain rituals or rites of initiation, our church has a right whereby you become a full-fledged member, an adult, a major leader, if you will, of the team of believers, the church. And we're celebrating that right, right now, the right of confirmation. And as a member of this team, you will receive certain gifts of God's Spirit that you are to use to build up His body, the church. Many of us, I know I did, have certain sports heroes who excelled in the sport. One of mine died just a couple, three weeks ago, Tom Seaver. He was a pitcher for the New York Mets. His father was probably a little too old, I don't remember him. But Tom Seaver. You know, it's centuries and centuries. Our church has had heroes and heroines whose lives give outstanding model of how to live as Catholic Christians. Individuals like Francis of Assisi, like Hodgson, like Gianni, like Joan of Arc. Each of you has selected one of those for your confirmation name. Just think, these saints are our sisters and brothers in this one family of faith, of which you will soon be fully initiated. And unlike a basketball, a baseball, or a football team, where we get older and we outgrow our time on the team, in the church, we grow even more and more into being good companions on the journey following Christ. And your presence here this afternoon says that you desire to be a full member of the church and to be an active participant, not just sitting on the bench, fascinated and preoccupied sometimes by the distractions of life that can lure us away from Christ and His church. So my friends, use those gifts of the Holy Spirit. Courage. Do what we know is right. Never mind what everybody else is doing. That's how we build character. Be a person of integrity. Today our world is in dire need of people of integrity. If you doubt that, watch three minutes of news. Understanding. Your education in the Catholic faith must never stop. No matter how old or how young we are. Learn more and more of the faith through the adult education programs offered by your parish, such as Bible study. Counsel. Listen to the guidance of your church. Obey the commandments. And again, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Know that the church will always be there for us. No matter where we might move to. No matter what college we may end up going to. No matter what our vocation in life might be. During your times in your life, the great things are happening. Go to your parish and share and celebrate your joy. During those times in life when you're hurting, there will be those times for all of us. Go to your parish and be comforted and be supported by the members of your faith family. Know that this body of Christ, this family of faith, this team of believers, 
will always be there for you. Praying, supporting, correcting, and affirming you. And the best food for your spiritual diet is, of course, the Eucharist. Again, don't just sit on the bench. Come to be nourished by the words of Scripture and with the body and blood of Christ at Mass each Sunday. Practice and practice and practice your faith. Build up this family of faith and your community. Embrace, as I mentioned to you before Mass, an attitude of lifelong service, a lifetime project of extending yourselves to others, as did Christ. Jesus tells us, follow me. Let's do that by staying in top spiritual shape so that we may all support one another in our common journey to the Father's home. God bless you. Candidates, please stand. On the day of Pentecost, the apostles received the Holy Spirit as the Lord had promised. They also gave the power of the Holy Spirit to others and so completing the work of baptism. You have already been baptized in Christ, and now you will receive the power of the Spirit and the sign of the cross in your forehead. You must be witnesses before all the world to be suffering death and resurrection. Your way of life should at all times reflect the goodness of Jesus. Be active members of the church, alive in Jesus Christ. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, give your lives completely in the service of others as did Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. So now, before you receive the imposition of the Spirit, I ask you, as we all stand, to lead us in the profession of faith that was made in our baptism for our parents and godparents made in union with the whole church. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles of Pentecost? This afternoon is given to you sacramentally in confirmation. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Candidates, please kneel. My dear sisters and brothers, let us all now pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them, to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through his anointing, to pour them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, 
the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated and be seated. Let us now be one in prayer to God our Father as we are one in the faith, hope, and love that His Spirit brings us. For this Son and these daughters of God, now confirmed by the gift of the Spirit, that they may be given witness to Christ by life built on faith and love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parents and sponsors of these newly confirmed, who have led them thus far by faith, that by word and example, they may continue to always to encourage them in following the way of Jesus Christ, we pray. For our prayer, for the Holy Church of God, in union with Francis our Pope, carry our bishop and all the bishops, that God who gladness us together by the Holy Spirit may help us grow in unity of faith and love until the Son returns in glory, we pray. For our prayer. Sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray now that my sacrifice of yours may be 
may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Except, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries as we celebrate this beautiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. May he make a 
us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your mom. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you in their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.